Hello folks, uh, after getting a few uh, emails lately about the uh, packet radio video I have up on YouTube and a couple of people would be really interested in knowing how this is set up how you send pictures through packet radio as well as uh, how you DX clusters on packet radio so with this video I'm hoping to answer a few questions on these topics and hopefully give you guys a better understanding of how it's uh, how it's all put together and how it do run packet radio is a very interesting mode like you say you can uh, send pictures through uh, packet using the camtronics or any tnc for that matter uh, the program i use is packet 62 there's a uh, folder in the program which is uh, in your uh, hard drive it's called sent files and received files. Sent is any uh, pictures or documents, text documents that you want to send over to here. You put in your send file folder, and anything that you receive over the ear, regards to text documents or pictures, would be in your received file folder in the packet program. Anyway, let's get to it and let's see if I can uh, help you guys out some. Uh, I've been at Packet Radio for about three or four years. Uh, I'm not a, um, a professional at this by no means. I'm only showing you guys what I know and hopefully, well, we'll uh, get a better understanding how this works. Okay, for simplicity's sake, uh, instead of disconnecting my whole station at the moment, I'm going to do a demo anyways on how to set up your uh, your packet station for a 2 meter radio. And in this case, the TNC that I'm using, which is pretty big, it's a AEA PK232MD or MBX. It's an upgraded version of the PK232. This one allows you to do Pactor 1. It uh, has a gateway node built into it. And there's all kinds of, mo uh, of modes. Do RTTY. Uh, it can receive slow scan. It can send CW as well as receive CW. Um, it has all kinds of little good little uh, modes. You should check it out. If you can get one, they're, they're excellent little uh, TNCs. Uh, these are not dual port TNCs meaning they will not receive and transmit on two radios simultaneously uh, they will not the, the, the AEA PK232 will not do that she's a single port TNC but you can select between two radios one on HF one on VHF uh, you can't operate a TNC on both bands simultaneously only one band or the other at any particular time so anyways Getting back to this, the TNC PK232. Uh, in order to hook this up, well, right off the bat, first thing you're going to need is a DB25 to DB9 serial cable, because uh, it's going to connect to this port. The connector. That's the. That's the DB25 to DB9. Uh, connector there that you're going to need this to connect the TNC to the back of your radio uh, you can get these any just about any length this one here is a six foot um, six foot cable that I have DB25 to DB9 and these costs uh, if you were to buy them at a rate at a at the source or anything like that uh, these cables cost about ten dollars Canadian to purchase these, but you need these to connect. In order for you to use packet, you need this particular cable. Uh, again, the DB25 connector would plug into the RS232 port on back of the TNC, and then the other DB9 side here would connect to the back of the computer. Your desktop or laptop either or but it has to have a nine pin din connector and if your computer only has USB ports and do not have this connector uh, you can buy a USB to 
uh, DB9 uh, adapter cable. It's a USB plug on one end, and you get the DB9 on the other. And I would say it would be a DB9 uh, female would come with it. So that's what you would need. Is the is is the adapter kit USB to two RS232. So again, your DB25 connector would plug into the back of your TNC, and the DB9 side would connect to the back of your computer. Okay, here's PK232 again. The cable is connected to the back of the TNC. The computer I'm using at the present, just for this demonstration, is my old laptop. It's a Pentium 1, 75 megahertz processor and like 32 kilobytes of RAM, which is nothing. <laughs> pretty slow but it do work uh, again your cable connect to the back of your laptop or desktop computer through the DB9 connector your DB9 connector on the back of your computer and in case you don't know what it actually looks like if I can get this off It would be a male DB9 connector. There you go. Male meaning the, can, the, the pins are sticking out from the back of the computer. So all you would do is take your DB9 connector, this end of it, and plug it in to your computer. And and screw in your tabs to make sure you got a good strong connection. So, there you go. That's that part of it. Easy enough, eh, hey, bye. Okay, we have the computer set up, ready to go. TNC and the radio. Well, I just turned on the radio, the radio's dead. <laughs> I forgot to charge the battery. Anyway, we'll uh, just. We'll use it anyway, just as a mock thing, nothing else. So anyways, laptop, doesn't need to be anything fancy. Uh, you need a packet program. In my case, I use packet 6 for mine. So what you do first, you turn on your TNC. Make sure everything's running, best to kind. Then you come over here on your laptop, computer, whatever. Start your packet program. With anything, any luck at all. Your TNC is already configured and will talk to your computer. In this case, I get command, command, command. You put your, click, type in my, enter. It'll give you your call sign. And in the case of the AEA, there's a gateway. So you type in my gate, enter, VO1MDS-7. You can add a B text if you want it as beacon text. The text for my case right now is V1MDS-7 gateway node slash V1MDS keyboard. So you want to use my gateway, you connect to V1MDS-7. If you want to talk to me directly to be a keyboard, you connect to V1MDS. And there's also memory heard, which is MH enter. And nothing's been heard since the last I haven't used this DNC now in a little while since I've got the Cantronics Cam Plus. So that's it. This is the basic part of actually setting up a packet program. <clears throat> Nothing to it.